Greetings, everyone. This is David Herman, alias Daz the Artist, in Olympia, Washington, with what I hope will be the final installment to this piece of art, uh, minus me putting on my chop at the end, which I probably won't add into the film because that takes me a while to change the date and everything. But let's add a new layer, and let's begin to see if different ways I can experiment with making the transparent hood over the brain and over the mouth and jaw. So let's uh, start with a new layer. I'm going to call this jaw jelly, just so I kind of know where I'm at. <laughs> If I can't think of something cool, I won't, but I'm going to try and do the same effect that I did to the eyes in the jaw-mouth layer and into the brain layer today. So uh, first things first, I've got to uh, get into the mirror symmetry mode. So we're going to go to uh, Pixel Persona. We're in Affinity Designer, as you may have guessed. We have now switched to... Uh, raster drawing or airbrush things like that as opposed to vector we're picking our brush uh, once you pick brush the menu across the top gives you the symmetry option we can take this horizontal this bar turn it vertically and if you've watched all the other ones I explain this bar quite a bit but just in case you're tuning in wherever you put this bar whether it's horizontal or vertical you're allowed to uh, draw on either half of it and it will be symmetrical. So if I drew on the right half it would be on the left, if I drew on the left it would be on the right and uh, you want to tell it to mirror and you want to tell it to lock it. Okay now let's try and do the jelly draw onto the chin and stuff here so it's encased in a glass part of the mask. So I'm going to go to white and I'm going to select a brush and I'm going to turn on my Express key remote on my Cintiq 24 inch monitor. I'm going to change the opacity at the top to about 60, the flow to about 20, the hardness to about, let's leave the hardness where it is, see what happens. So I want to create kind of this look at the jelly. So you see, I have like a, a white fade to a brighter than a solid dot and a shadow. It's kind of how I devise my own jelly. So let's uh, let's see if we can create a thick edge. Now I got this on a layer so I can kill it if I don't like it. So first thing I'm going to do is create an edge and uh, I'm going to magnify this. So we can work just on the jaw. Let's see how this works. Alright, so let's just save what we did. Okay. And now I'll go back to brush. All of our tools should be on. Yep. And let's do it. So this was to say the glass started here. Watch the upper right around the blue metal. And then it came straight down across here. Now this, it's not necessarily glass, it could be some kind of futuristic material. 
curved out a little bit here, curved in a little bit here, follows the jawline, but not to the jawline, extends a little bit. That's a lot of brushing, so we have to save. Assume it's saved, I guess. And uh, let me just double check that ping. Make sure it was all good news. Uh, so I ordered something from eTrailer. My order is shipped. Woo boy! So being a, an ex hippie guy, I ordered. Uh, something for the back of my 2003 Honda Element, which I'm the original owner. <laughs> the door locks don't let me in. I have to crawl in the back of the hatch, but once I'm in the hatch, I can open it from the inside. You know, one of those kind of deals. Uh, my car now has 137,000 miles on it or something as the original owner. But what I bought was uh, earlier this year when I felt I could charge and pay off uh, I've been buying a lot of things this year, by the way, so little by little. Um, what did I do? Oh, yeah, I put a trailer hitch on my Honda Element with the two-inch square receiver and installed that myself. Bought it online from eTrailer for a 2003 Honda Element. And see, now I'm working on the left half, and it's duplicating it on the right half. So it depends how your hand works. Now, that already gives you the sense of the glass. See, people don't know what I'm going to do till I get to the end of this. And uh, so if glass wraps around, it's got to tie along the edge all the way over the nose and everything. And this is where it's going to get really bizarre looking, right? So at the top of the bridge of the nose, and, you know, I never have any ideas where I'm going with this stuff when I start to think about it. Now, drawing back and forth like that's really a no-no. I'm going to go in one direction for processing. So let me hit uh, save. Especially when you film your work, like I do, to show people on a video. When I'm filming this, that, in combination with the software that films, it really drives everything just bonkers. I want to go in the same direction. Now I'm going to follow this edge along the metal. What I'm calling metal. It's it's completely uh, something of my own design, you know. All right, let's connect this here. I never have any idea how I'm doing that. I'm bringing this down. Now, because I was an advertising executive, because I was a martial artist, because I was a tattoo artist for 20 years, and now segueing into digital art, all of those various experiences, besides drawing all the time, whether animal, vegetable, mineral kingdom, plants, you name it, microorganisms, bugs, to have a rich input in my brain allows me to dream up these things, okay? So now even the overall of the blue and everything kind of has some kind of a glass look. So we're gonna we're gonna bring this, even though yeah we're gonna we're gonna trick this down on the sides to connect here. One direction, smooth out some of this. Hit this again. The save is crucial because of my. RAM and everything. I need to upgrade the RAM. But right now, camping stuff and travel stuff and all that's getting a little more important. This is a, a very important year to me, chronologically. And um, I'm doing a life reset. <laughs> and hope to meet some kind of really cool lady in the future. Anybody that's an artist, a writer, um, 
super creative woman. I would really enjoy that after all the life experiences I've had. So I'd like to have someone that loves the outdoors, camping, traveling. Um, they could have some really cheap rent here in the guest bedroom and just take some time off and have an adventure. I'm just plugging that in here. Because I do things like that. Why not? You only live once. All right, now, I want to connect the top of these brows kind of with some of that white. So let's bring it down to the sides of this enclosure. Perfect. And if I didn't like it, I would change it. So I might get in there and do some shadow work, but now I'm going to bring this down the sides a little. I'm going to open the diameter of the brush. I'm going to spread it out just a skosh to the side to lift the metal glass composite enclosure together and still show a border just like that to bring that closer to the viewer. By lighting up the sides, we bring it towards us. So there's a lot of things I do when I draw. I build in layers like everybody. That allows it to be non-destructive, meaning if you turn off a layer, like this layer we just did, right, I can turn this off and it reverts to the original drawing without damaging any of my airbrush work or anything. So that's how you work non-destructive. It's a new term I've heard. I haven't thought of it. And then uh, how do I want this shell to look? So this is where we're going to add in some cool jelly thing. If it doesn't work, I try something else because I make it up as I go along. There isn't, I don't have a formula. I'm sorry, I don't have a formula. So let's just start on each side of the nose and come down. And that should be a little wider because we, we like the look of the interior. Just a little wider and a little further. Okay, now let's put that solid uh, mark. So to do that, I'm going to go uh, to my brushes. I'm going to select the basic, which gives me the solid brush. I'm going to come back. I'm going to dial in the solid size, just like you see in the eye. This is just a trick I invented. I don't know if it's going to work here or every case. But something I thought of, dreamed about myself, sharing it. Okay, somehow that like reflection, 100% uh, is just a little too intense. So let's undo that while we're early. And let's save what we have so the machine isn't thinking. And let's go back to the other. Well, I really like the intensity of that, but let's get to see if there's one that's soft edge. There we go. And now let's try that. Uh, so you got to follow the line of your flow up to here. Right in there. Again, that's cool, but it's got to follow the surface. So let's edit undo. Now, the way I came up with this idea as I discovered a magical video years ago. Everyone knows what the PBS network is, public broadcasting. Canada has their own equivalent of public broadcasting. And one day while surfing the net, I found that a young man went through the archives of all the records of astronauts being in outer space and what he found was something uncanny outer space reaches out to touch the human and there's videos of it now how does it do it well I'm gonna tell you and it's very very spooky let's just say this we can always undo What it does is it looks like an inchworm of light that comes right through the side of the spaceship, touches the astronaut's face on one side, and crawls up the contour over the bridge of the nose down the other side, 
like it was doing a contour drawing that an artist does. Now, this is quite scary <laughs> when you see it. And the astronauts saw it and felt it and were terrified. They said, what is that? So based on how that looked, it kind of gave me the idea for the way, see how I'm doing this and creating glass and stuff? It's something I studied with my eyes for a long time. Now we're going to drop in a shadow in there. And we're going to do that on a separate layer. It's going to be called the jelly shadow, the, the jaw jelly shadow. The reason I'm doing it on a separate layer is in case I don't like my shadow, I can remove that even though I like the jelly. Okay? So this is how you continue to stay non-destructive. So we're going to go back to that soft edge one, and we're going to pick, uh, see this shadow in the eye? It's actually black, darkening the teal. So we're going to do a black that's cast down. You can do this any way you want. This is, you know, my discovery, uh, my way, but it may not be everybody's way. At least I give you a starting point, you know? You can't fault me for that. So let's go to color. Let's do a deep purple shadow. So we're going to click that. We click the dot. Open up our color picker. Da -da -da -da, color picker. Okay, so it's color chooser. You got the horizontal band, or you can set all your colors based on percentages or even a hexadecimal number. Me, I just pick something that's rich towards the black and has lots of color. And then that'll be my deep shadow. And I'm just going to feather that in right under here somewhere. Like that. And that's pretty cool. Now we're going to cast something under the nose. Make this dial it smaller. Uh, by the way, I'm drawing this on the Cintiq Pro 24-inch monitor. I highly recommend this for anyone. I have no deals with Wacom to promote their products, but uh, I so enjoy this product that I, I try and put a plug in for them each time just because they were very nice to me at the Wacom Experience Center in Portland, Oregon, which anybody can go to and test their products live bringing your own computer and your own laptop in to see if your software that you use currently will run with connecting it to a tablet and making sure your graphics card and everything is up to snuff. See, so that looks cool, but it's pretty ominous. Let's turn it off. Turning it off, do I like it? Turn it on. See, this is the nice thing about a layer. And I think I'm going to change that color altogether. So I'm going to kill, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's turn it on and just undo it all. So you can go back like this so I don't have to make another layer. This is just take a couple seconds because it was a few strokes. Should be able to go all the way back to the time you connected the layer. And you keep on doing it, and oh, now we want to go back. So edit, add pixel. Okay, so you still put the layer back in, but we didn't do any work. Now I'm thinking the color should be the orange. It just looks right, and I'll double click this to get the color chooser, and go into an ochre. And now, make sure I'm on my jelly jaw. Let's see, edit. Right, so jaw jelly shadow again. I went back one too far. Jaw jelly shadow. And I'm getting all this dialed in, okay? Because I have, uh, like I say, I have processing going on. See how Flash that did that? It saved it perfectly. It uh, 
it says low battery warning. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, is that right? Two twenty five. No, we should be good. This should be good. All right. So there's no battery in there. All right. We got the ochre. Let's try that shadow again. And, uh... Oh, brush. Brush. Shadow. Okay, there we go. So let's... Let's put some shadow under that. Shadow in here, which I want the shadow of the objects. Mm, too heavy. So this is where you kind of play around. Uh, all right, there's some shadow there. Now I want it even darker. Go back to my color color picker and come down here. And I'm going to put that right under the orange part of the bony-like structure. I'm not touching it like this. So it's a cast shadow. Yes, 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 yes. And then that shows kind of a texture. I'm going to put a shadow under here. Let's see if I can do this. Dividing. Not too heavy. Do let's uh we're in 100 percent we didn't want to be 100 percent wow wasn't watching that okay hardness it's okay and uh kind of just come down here like that go by the outer edge very slowly control come under this one darken the tip now that's got some lift. Okay, now this, we're going to come around this edge, shaping it just a little bit bumpy to there. Like it's uh, breathing apparatus air. And uh, separate the white. And add some brown above this dark black. A little bit more rich. Come across underneath the blue. Cast a little shadow there. And save. Yes. Yes. Very good, very good. Now, I'm going to come down the center with a super light. Just like this. Uh, too dark. Let's go back one. run that stroke again yes and then come out uh, on the inner sides of that a little bit like that um, make a slight rounded nostril come down like that now go a touch darker in the middle this is where symmetry is like amazing because Instantaneously, it happens to both sides, and you can really see what you're doing. Uh, I, I'm uh, exquisitely into the symmetry factor, and of course, you can turn it off and make your, uh, you know, if you wanted a scar on one face, on one side of the face of a character, you could 
build the character in symmetry and then smash him up a little bit with turning symmetry up. <laughs> if you want to smash a guy, you know, if you want to put a scar or dog bite in his eyebrow or something cool like macho stuff that we like as men, being a Detroit boy and having done martial arts two-thirds of my life when I was younger, I do like having a scar all the time, but uh, I'm too old for that now. Okay. Girls like scars in Detroit. <laughs> we live in a different time now where everybody's just, you know, emo from the internet. So, whether you like that or not, it's the way it is. And so people that are out of lost touch with reality, things that were cool aren't anymore. And yet they stand there and watch guys. Uh, they'll film somebody being killed. <laughs> like they just did the other day on the internet, and of course I don't watch that stuff, but how people have fascinations for that, just is a, it's a bad sign. It's because they've lost touch with three-dimensional reality. Even while they're looking at a three-dimensional world, it seems unreal to them and two-dimensional. Like, okay, we'll hit the power button and the guy will come back to life or something, but very sad, that's not the way it works. Okay. So now I have this connection inside. Connecting that up. Uh, energy. So this is this is where I go a little wild on my own. Where I just see things and spontaneously create. That's what I'm doing. So let's save. You can always tell when you have to save because it starts to act wonky. And you don't want that timer to stop, ever, when I'm filming, because the minute it does that, it uh, interrupts the whole video and we have a glitch. So, is that the right color? No. So don't accept, don't be lazy. If you don't like the way something looks, change it. Just change it. You don't have to know all the colors. You can look at it visually. That's what this is. And say, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know, do not make yourself face unordinary pressures from yourself of perfection when you can erase. You have the ability to start over. I never worry about it. I just start over again. You know what I mean? Just start over. Yeah. And this is this is one of the beauties of this because when you paint traditionally as an airbrush artist, oh my god, this is so complicated to set up a brisket. You know, I'll cut a piece of plastic, it would be shaped like a French curve. And then when you're good, you hold that in your hand above the art freehand style in the air. Uh, the more you get into airbrushing and then you kind of just maneuver it while you paint, you kind of just go turn it with your hand, the brush is making that noise, and you're turning it. But if you did it and it came out bogus, you can't go back. You, you got to paint over it. And that's, you don't want a lot of paint buildup. You, it's very complicated to fix airbrush art in the real, you know, in the real. So, uh, where's my brown? So if you get the brown, you go to a nice orange. You double click and get your color chooser. You go down to where it's down there. Yeah. And that makes a nice rich brown. You can bring this out now by shadow. We've got and we've got to take into consideration the surface shapes. This is where your drafting skills come up. You're thinking of how light or shadow falls on a shape. You may modify the shape. You may wonder how you got this life. Do, 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 do. As the days go by, watching the days go by. Yeah, good old talking head stuff. Oh, this is trippy. It's working. Now, I'm trying to keep the nostrils and everything a little alien looking, a little reptilian looking, a little bit snaky looking. Uh, this is made by a maker, a little bit different than this. Okay, now, the glass itself, 
Let's go to another layer for now. Shaboom! This is going to be uh, Samurai Glass Mask. Mm, did I hit something there that's funky? No. Okay. Enter. Boy, darn. And save. All these little things are making the machine think. All right. So now we want that gloss really tying this. Think how far this sticks out. Like it was Scorpion's mask, you know, from Mortal Kombat or something, now that I think about it. So I want a, an airbrush line and go away. I'm going to go into my brushes. I think it's out. I'm going to get a nice brush here. Uh, I'm going to change the opacity to about 75, 60, 75. That's all good. We've got to bump some hard and stuff on this. Okay. And let's just draw that shadow now in white. Let's make sure we're in white. Swatches, white, okay. Uh, down the side, where it meets the uh, material. And so this edge here, this is showing you the thickness. That the mask comes up and it's kind of like has a thickness uh, of the material itself. And then your shadow is going to be like here on the bridge. And that little reflection. And uh, it's cool, but it's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to edit. I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, and save. So I can process that back. Timer's still working. We may be able to pull off a 50 minute one here. I'm not gonna get this done, unfortunately, but. What do I want to do with this? I think maybe blue, you know? This is how my mind works. My mind's saying blue. Go to blue. So we're going to go to blue. We're going to bring up the blue color chooser. We're going to say our reflecting from the metal into the glass. Let's do that. This is a mind thinking thing, you know? So maybe a little wider. And then out here, see. Now it makes some sense, like you're thinking that this is reflecting into here somehow. But it looks lower level than this. So there's got to be a connection. Let's see if we can connect here. Just like that. Yep, just like. Just like. Okay, and there should be some red at the top uh, to show the eyebrow reflection. The eyebrow eyelid <laughs> creative thing I did, I don't know what that is. But uh, from the sockets of red, the vein-like split, let's, let's do that. Let's go deep. So double click, bring up color choosing, go deep, let's put that into there, like that, see now you got some kind of a bizarro reflection. This is the genius of layers, man. You can putz, you can putz around, man, you can, you can find your soul. It's in there. I'm telling you, it's in there somewhere. Depth is everything. You want the feeling of layers coming at you, the 
depth of soul of riches, edit back, save. And uh, so you gotta darken that edge just a skosh with red. It's going to the red. And this is how you discover. You know, other people, they have formulas, okay? They just say, every time I paint a reflection, it's going to be this way. Every time I paint a shadow, it's this way. Every time I do something, it's this way. Uh, that's a cop-out. You know, Hajime Soriyama is the greatest robot painter ever. And even he changed that every time. Just ready to go. Like that, see? Now you got kind of a reflection of each side. There's some deep purple happening there. You see how I'm gonna grab some of that. Just make sure I love it. Bring up the color too here. I'm going, see this is too much into the red. I mean too much into the blue. I wanna to go towards the red in the shadow. And uh, remember there's 16 billion colors when you use CMYK. 16 million, I'm sorry. So, uh, don't just pick five colors. Don't use color palettes. You know, that stuff is, I mean, unless you're doing something that's going to be printed on a silk screen with five colors or something like that. When you actually paint, you just use every color you possibly can for riches. So right in here, we're going to hit it. The deep purple. Yeah. See, and you got that fade. And you want it darker. So that's like a... Uh, a strip of a certain weight and a certain value. So I'm going to take it back dark at the top, rich, you know, narrow my brush. This is a fuzz, just a fuzz, just a fuzz more, and bring that in dark on the bridge, and then blend it lighter into the white. So get way down there and kind of just. Hit it right there. And see that's all happening now, kind of glass and reflections and stuff, and it's it's confusing because we don't have just the right highlight yet on the side, but we will. We're gonna go with the white dot right about here. Now notice that I went with the soft edge. I'm going to put the hard edge in the center. I'm going to take the opacity up to 100. And I'm going to hit it with the hard, right? Uh, more towards the side, like the light is hitting it with the side and fading towards the center. And then maybe another one or two. kind of uh, make the mask happen. You know, everything can't be ultra-focused. So you got to think about that. So when it hit, like if the bridge was there, I think it's going to hit more on the edge, the way I do this. I've got this really cool, let's connect right in here. Just, uh, yep, bring that over to the edge, actually past the seam. A little more. And now we got some glass. You know, that's too wide. It's like a strange feeling, so I'll un undo that. I'm going to undo it again. I, I sometimes I don't like what I do. All right, let's save this just to make sure we're alive still. What a beautiful session. And. Let me think about this now. Let's be up at the bridge, right there. And let's go with uh, let's put some green in there, like a teal green. And take this a little bit this way. Yeah, from the eye, I'm gonna take that color and share it here. Just, it's a beautiful color. Let's share that in there. See. Something like maybe it bounced off the eye or the eye 
somehow is connected in reflection to that. And a little tiny red in there. This is going to be insane, but the reflection of the eye and the bridge of the nose. suggesting and then the dot pupil uh, <laughs> this is the this is the genius of it all this is the genius of it all where I'm manufacturing reality that doesn't exist and making it believable Oh, oh, for me, this is so cool to invent because uh, I don't know where I'm going. But see, them somehow the reflection of the eye in the glass, changing it from uh, upward diagonal to perpendicular to the eye. Uh, and now if I put that, the jelly, the jelly in it would be going from right here. Let's go, let's go white and make it really tiny on the end. Like that. See? Now, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Chaka, boom. That's a winner. And now that super sharp highlight, let's, let's bring that in. Uh, here. Just like that. I'm not going to touch it. Boom. File saved. Oh, yeah. This whole thing is to get the 3D look and to create my own way of doing that. Uh, and is it going to be smooth over the nose without a projection? but you still want it to bulge out towards the viewer, the whole mass of glass. This is very tricky. So, uh, probably a reflection of something like that spiral would be super cool if I reduced it, <laughs> dropped it in there and everything would be like insane, you know, that'd be, that'd be so over the top. But the purple stripe might, might catch uh, hmm. All right, let's see something here. Let's go one up. I don't want to mess anything right now. I don't want to change anything that I have here. But if I screw up anything else, I can revert back to here non-destructively because it's on a layer. All right, so I'm going to go glass reflection above. Let's see, what am I going to call this? Ultra glass reflection. And these are just things to get me back. You can name it whatever you want. You could call it ABCD. It really doesn't matter. I just want to find my way home quick because I have so many layers. And then sub layers. And I didn't group them or anything because, you know, just not that knowledgeable yet on how to work in all of this. But I'm getting there. I mean, I know how to group it and all that. But you spend more time doing that than drawing in the beginning. The essential thing is learn how to draw in my brain uh, with the tools because I already know how to draw. And then once I get the tools down, fine-tuning all the options is, is very professional, but I'll, I'll get to that later. All right, so I want, like a, I want this to be raised in this area. You see where my little brush is going, as you can see. And I want it to represent reflection. So we're gonna brush the color in, just sweep. Let's hit it one more time, a little bit above, come down harder. You don't want to be a solid. So there's something going on there. Then the jelly. Drop in the jelly. When I say jelly, it's the white reflection uh, to get contrast, to make things shiny. In art, you want extreme contrast between your lights and your darks. When they're blended, like soft edged, like you see the eyebrows and stuff, till I put the one white mark in at the top, it was kind of flat but shaded. 
and then you put that highlight in there it's an extreme highlight and then you just you hit that and you have such contrast between light and dark that yes it becomes glass so uh, the jelly and oh yeah Oh yeah, see now we've got that kind of the feel where there's a lift. Let's put the highlight right there, pull it off the line a little. So you think there's some kind of surface. And then, uh, it's got to feather on a little bit right here I think. Like that mm -hmm. and I'll save that because I've got a lot of processing going on remember it's mirror so it's processing both sides a lot of stuff for the process and I'm uh, getting this machine dialed in just like a finely tuned airplane or jet or something I just love the way it's coming along so bear with me folks uh, now we're going to have our highlight in here I don't want to mess these lips up they're really cool but I, I only take things to so much detail if I think later on I'm going to be covering up parts of them. So uh, just enough. So let's let's go. Boom. There it is. And then right down here. Boom. And then as it gets closer to the chin. Boom. And then right in the center. Cha cha cha. Glass. All right. Oh yeah. You see that reflection? It's just ever so subtle up the lips, but now you've got a plane that's hitting light. We're going to come down with the jelly right in there. Right there. See, now the light is hitting a surface above the lips and the, the blue mandible I drew in there. And this is thinking, you know, don't kid yourself, this takes a lot of thought, and you're watching me think it out. Uh, we're going to go up in the opacity. Now, I'm just I'm just happy with the results, so you know, I get ecstatic. But it's certainly not gospel. Every other guy that draws will, or girl will have their own way of achieving these effects. You're just watching me invent my effect. Because what makes my drawing unique is I'm not stealing nothing. Right? I'm drawing it. I created this out of the brain. There it is. Now, you've got that white. We're going to see some green in there. Some of this surrounding stuff. So it just kind of like doesn't hurt to like do a little wide band of something vague. Like, like that. Oh, yeah. That was bold move. And save. Oh man, this is so cerebral. So cerebral thinking this out. It's just mind blowing. <laughs> and now you, you see these orange lines and red wires and uh, energy fields and paths. I mean, uh, we got to drop them in somehow in the, sh in the reflection. Just crudely, but it doesn't matter what shape it is. I would just kind of like put an arc like that. It's suggestive, right? And maybe some other thing like that. And then drop in the red. Uh, cut the size like so. And touch of orange. <laughs> so we hit the highlight over this, see? It's so believable because these things are just suggesting what's around it. It doesn't have to be true, you know. It, it's not necessary to be photorealistic true. Trust me. You get the feeling. You get the feeling without gumming it up. Now, there's that nice horizontal one there. I really should throw that in, but the way this angle is, I'm making it take it from a different space. And then there's these black marks which could be in there too, the uh, dark energy where it's opening up 
uh, electromagnetic uh, dark energy fields, little black holes in time and space around the bot in the multiverse. I could have some of those, but they would be very distracting and look like pockmarks. So I'm going to kind of leave that out. But I will have the purple on the chin. Now let's say you want the exact color. Of course, you would use your eyedropper. Let's just show you that. We go eyedropper, uh, pick a color like that, and boom. And hit outside your art in case you have all these borders like I do. Uh, be back into brush. There we go. And then I'm going to get some reflection on the chin here. Of that. And I don't want it on the edge. I want a little bit higher than the edge, and I want a little bit bold. So I'm going to make a sweep. It's terrifying. Let's uh, let's go to another layer. I'm gonna gum nothing up here. And wrong color. So edit, undo. What happened? I was in the purple. Let's do. I'm just gonna steal that. Let's do. Let's see how that looks. Uh, too harsh, right? I was at 88. Let's go down there and that's let's get right like that so just a little then as he gets up the side a little more not hiding the detail not hiding the detail and stuff but enough of a diffusion so you can see it's glass and then that fuchsia hot spot that would be cool so I'm sorry, even if I was doing this for commission stuff, uh, there's thinking that goes in this, and I would not be the cheapest guy, but I would be the most inventive. I'll give you, I'll give myself that. And I probably am pretty cheap because I'm not famous, and uh, I don't do any commission work. So <laughs> whoever hires me first or buys one of my artworks for me, just if you wanted the entire exclusive work, if you wanted to just own this by yourself. You could. It could be yours. It truly could be yours. Uh, licensed. You know. Edit, undo. I'm not happy with that mark. I'm separating the tinier the edge from the side push. There we go. Right there. I want to separate under here. And I'm going to put a little dark up here. Oh man, this is magic. I'm going to call this tweaks to the glass. I have an idea where I'm at. You can still see even in miniature there's little squares next to your words and, and you also have these zeros where you turn something off. And turn it back on. So. But non destructive is the key. Wow. Now, do I want the glass to be going like right over the metal and itself? It, 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 it could be all one now. See, so we have the, they're connected, but then there could be like the over, the over glass. Oh. It's insane. Art is insane. It'll make you crazy. Let's take an overlook view. Let's let's view the whole project. Because I'm only going to keep this about an hour. Zoom in to fit. Wow, that is really working now. Magnificent. This is not going to be the finish, but holy cow. I'm going to stop the video here because everything's working perfectly. That's a bonus. And I'm not going to mess anything up. So this is one of my best videos ever in my life. And we're going to stop.